Jesus Trilogy, the book four, Messiahs, chapter five, part B. Sabbath morning was a beautiful day in little Judean city. It lay up in the hills and one could see for miles from the top of the city wall. The sun shone brightly. The old temple was not in the best condition, but on this day even it seemed to have a special radiance. Good morning, Jabeth. Good morning, Amon. Good morning, Naaman. And how is the little woman today? Zacharias liked to be early to church so he could greet everyone as they came in. How are you, Miriam, and how are the twins today? Miriam's twins were two years old and a handful, but they were so precious. Elizabeth so loved children, but never could have any of her own. She and Zacharias had undergone all kinds of tests, but though the doctors acknowledged that they were both perfectly healthy, all they could do is to keep trying, and they tried how they tried. They had probably made love more than any other couple in all Judea, but it was to no avail. They tried so much, they even got sick of it. Well, not really, but the frustration was there. Elizabeth and Zacharias finally talked it out and went back to normal three times a week. But that emptiness remained for both of them. Adoption was discussed, but it was just too expensive for a priest's salary. She could take a job and did, but it still wouldn't be enough. She prayed about it, but finally gave up praying about it, too. She quit her job and began to babysit some. That was actually pleasure, not work. Where's that man? Elizabeth called to the deaconess Anne. What's the matter with him? We've studied our Bible lessons and we sang songs and the children are getting restless. That little Jonathan has been crying for ten minutes, Elizabeth lamented. There you are. What's the matter with you? Get in there and preach. Elizabeth gave him a nudge and Zacharias walked toward the door of the sanctuary. He climbed the stairs to the pulpit and opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. He tried again, but again nothing came out. The congregation began to murmur. Elder Horeb came up and said, Are you okay, Zacharias? Zacharias nodded yes, but again when he opened his mouth, no sound came out. The crowd was making more noise now. Is there a doctor in the house? Dr. Luke strode to the podium and began to examine the old priest right on the stage. His pulse was strong and there was no apparent respiratory distress, no weakness of the extremities. He motioned for a candle and peered down Zacharias' throat. All appeared normal. Were you ill recently, Luke asked. No, he's been fine, Elizabeth answered for Zacharias, her disgust turning to worry. What's wrong with him, Doc? Elizabeth implored. It appears he's had some type of stroke. Can't be sure. We'll have to watch him overnight in the hospital. Zacharias shook his head no, but Elizabeth said emphatically, You're going to the hospital right now. Can he walk, or do we have to carry him? Zacharias waved his hand and began to walk. Okay, okay, walk, but are, we are going to the hospital to have you checked out. Due to this unexpected occurrence, services will be canceled for today. Have a good Sabbath, and remember our priest Zacharias in your prayers, Elder Horb said, concluding the service. Zacharias spent three days in Good Samaritan Hospital, but never regained his voice. Special herbal medicines and treatments consisting of heat and neck massage did nothing. As it appeared there no further complications would set in, he was sent home on Tuesday morning. Dr. Luke told Elizabeth he still didn't know the cause of the stroke, but suspected some type of infection. If indeed this was the case, he expected that it would eventually clear his system and the voice would return. If it was due to some other unknown cause, it might be a permanent problem. Time alone would tell. Time, she thought. You never can get a straight answer from these doctors. With all their training, you'd think they would have better answers than time. She remembered similar answers to the questions she and Zacharias had posed to Luke's father, also a doctor, when she was trying to get pregnant. Time didn't help then, and it probably wouldn't now. Can I fix you something to eat? You're probably starved. Hospital food is pretty bad. Zechariah shook his head in the negative and sat down in the chair. Mako came up and licked his face. Mako was a big sheepdog who was like their child. I'm sure glad it was you who lost his voice and not me. I'd go crazy if I couldn't talk. She regretted the cruel statement as soon as it left her lips. I'm sorry. You know what I meant. I'm sure it will come back soon. She was digging a deeper hole, so she shut up. After supper, in its one-sided conversation, she got Zacharias a tablet and asked him to write something, anything. She was going crazy with only Mako to talk to. 
He wrote, The day has been long and I'm weary. I think I'll turn in. I'll have to talk to, I mean write to, the high priest down in Nazareth about getting my pension started. But Dr. Luke said your voice would come back, Elizabeth said, alarm in her voice. I'm 70. I should let someone younger take over anyway. Young Eliakim will graduate soon and has, has expressed interest in moving back home. But he's just a kid, Elizabeth argued. He'll learn, Zach wrote. On the job. Great. We must be willing to let God take care of it, he wrote, and put the pen down. He got up to go to the bathroom and then went off to bed. Elizabeth crawled into her bed and an hour or so later. She was vaguely surprised not to hear the usual snoring. Maybe this stroke or whatever it was had cured one problem, but she was so used to the noise she lay, lay awake for a while, thinking. Just as she dozed off, she felt Zacharias next to her. He was firm against her, something rare these days. She turned toward him and put his arms around her and began making sweet love to her. They had been great lovers once, and for some strange reason it seemed like old times. Memory after memory raced through her mind of all the wonderful times they had shared. She didn't want this night to end. By morning, when Elizabeth woke, Zacharias was already up kneeling in prayer out in the yard. The sun was just peeking over the east hills. O oh, great, wonderful God, forgive my unforgivable weak faith. Elizabeth walked toward the door but stopped short. She saw his writing on the tablet. She picked it up and read, I know you cannot forgive my sin and weakness, but if it be your will, allow it to happen as you have said. Elizabeth turned and began to cook his favorite breakfast. Payment for the most wonderful night in years, she thought aloud. Good morning, love. He wandered into the kitchen and she kissed him. And how is my man doing this morning, she asked. He looked a little worse for wear. You were wonderful last night. It was like 30 years ago on the boat to Cyprus, remember? He shook his head, disrupting her euphoria. Zacharias, Elizabeth raised her voice. What were you asking the Lord to forgive you for, she quizzed. He gave her a long look, walked over inside. He put his arm on her shoulder. He was a foot taller than her petite five-foot-two frame. Her hair was nearly all gray now, but she looked as good as any 60-year-old and better than most 50-year-olds. He appreciated that. She took sure good care of herself. She motioned for him to come over. Eat, she said. You'll need your strength for tonight, my dear. He ate slowly, and when he finished, he motioned for her to bring him the tablet. God took away my voice, he wrote. She grinned. No, he wouldn't do that. It's some infection or stroke or something. He wrote on. He took away my voice last Sabbath. I went into the holy place before the church. An angel was there. She laughed. He cracked, dear. It must have been a stroke after all. He persisted. He said we would have a son. She saw he was really serious, and her tone changed. You can't be serious, are you? She sat. What else? She queried. He is to proclaim the Messiah. Her mouth dropped wide open. Impossible. I'm 60. This is some sort of joke. You've not only had a stroke, you've lost your mind. No joke, he wrote. God's truth. It hit her like a ton of bricks. His voice lost. Last night, so strange, yet so real. Oh, no, she cried. It can't be. He nodded in the affirmative. She put her hands on her forehead and began to cry loudly. He reached over and put a hand on her shoulder. I can't do this. What will people think? I'm too old. But as she uttered the words, she knew it was as true as the sun coming up every morning. Oh, Zacharias, how could you? <laughs> I mean, it was wonderful, but, but I don't know what I mean, she said and commenced crying louder. He knew when, he, when to leave her alone. He went out on the porch, sat down, and returned to praying. That night, as they lay in their separate beds, they made a pact. Neither would tell anyone else until the baby was born.